Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe Bakurim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today is November 18th, and we will be reading from Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 28 and chapter 38 verses 1 through 23. James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27 and chapter 2 verses 1 through 17. Psalm chapter 117 verses 1 through 2 and Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. Let's begin. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 28. Yahweh's hand was on me, and he brought me out in Yahweh's spirit, and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and behold, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, Lord Yahweh, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and tell them, You dry bones, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you will live. I will lay sinews on you, and will bring up flesh on you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you will live. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, there was an earthquake. Then the bones came together, bone to its bone. I saw, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh came up, and skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and tell the wind. The Lord Yahweh says, Come from the four winds, breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore, prophesy and tell them. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am Yahweh, when I have opened your graves, and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. Then I will place you in your own land, and you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, says Yahweh. Yahweh's word came again to me, saying, You, son of man, take one stick and write on it, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them for yourself to one another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. When the children of your people speak to you, saying, Won't you show us what you mean by these? Tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his companions, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. The sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Say to them, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. 
one king will be king to them all. They will no longer be two nations. They won't be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. They won't defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So they will be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them. They all will have one shepherd. They will also walk in my ordinances and observe my statutes and do them. They will dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, in which your fathers lived. They will dwell therein, they and their children and their children's children forever. David, my servant, will be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them, multiply them, and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My tent also will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. The nations will know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. Ezekiel chapter 38 verses 1 through 23 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward God of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords, Persia, Cush, and put with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, the house of Togarma in the uttermost parts of the north, and all his hordes, even many peoples with you. Be prepared, yes, prepare yourself, you and all your companies who are assembled to you, and be a guard to them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land that is brought back from the sword, that is gathered out of many peoples on the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste. But it is brought out of the peoples, and they will dwell securely, all of them. You will ascend. You will come like a storm. You will be like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your hordes and many peoples with you. The Lord Yahweh says, It will happen in that day that things will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to those who are at rest, who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take the plunder and to take prey, to turn your hand against the waste places that are inhabited, and against the people who are gathered out of the nations, who have gotten livestock and goods, who dwell in the middle of the earth, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions of it, will ask you, Have you come to take the plunder? Have you assembled your company to take the prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, Prophesy and tell Gog, the Lord Yahweh says, In that day when my people Israel dwells securely, will you not know it? You will come from your place out of the uttermost parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It will happen in the latter days 
that I will bring you against my land, that the nations may know me, when I am sanctified in you, Gog, before their eyes. The Lord Yahweh says, Are you he of whom I spoke in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for years that I would bring you against them? It will happen in that day when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh, that my wrath will come up into my nostrils. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, all creeping things who creep on the earth, and all the men who are on the surface of the earth will shake at my presence. Then the mountains will be thrown down, the steep places will fall, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him to all my mountains, says the Lord Yahweh. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will enter into judgment with him, with pestilence and with blood. I will rain on him and on his hordes and on the many peoples who are with him, an overflowing shower with great hailstones, fire and sulfur. I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27 So then, my beloved brothers, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man doesn't produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting away all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness. Receive with humility the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not only hearers, deluding your own selves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his natural face in a mirror. For he sees himself and goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues, not being a hearer who forgets, but a doer of the work, this man will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks himself to be religious while he doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this man's religion is worthless. Pure religion and undefiled before our God and Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. James chapter 2 verses 1 through 17. My brothers, don't hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ of glory with partiality. For if a man with a gold ring in fine clothing comes into your synagogue, and a poor man in filthy clothing also comes in, and you pay special attention to him who wears the fine clothing, and say, Sit here in a good place, and you tell the poor man, Stand there or sit by my footstool. Haven't you shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, didn't God choose those who are poor in this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Don't the rich oppress you and personally drag you before the courts? Don't they blaspheme the honorable name by which you are called? However, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin, being convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do, as men who are to be judged by a law of freedom, for judgment is without mercy to him who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers, if a man says he has faith, but has no works? Can faith save him? And if a brother or sister is naked and in lack of daily food, and one of you tells them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, 
yet you didn't give them the things the body needs. What good is it? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead in itself. Psalm chapter 117 verses 1 through 2 Praise Yahweh, all you nations. Extol Him, all you peoples. For His loving kindness is great toward us. Yahweh's faithfulness endures forever. Praise Yah. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1 The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We love you, Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. We recognize you in your power and ask your forgiveness for anything we have said, done, or thought that was unpleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment, and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will. Denounce our sinful nature. Lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Your unmerited grace, mercy and love cause us to flourish. As you cause us to flourish, may we be mindful of frustrating your grace by turning away from your laws over and over again. We desire to be pleasing in your sight and obedient to your word. As we spend time with you, we ask that you open our eyes to your mysteries that our faith may increase. Strengthen us to walk through trials and maintain joy while perseverance is produced in us, making us mature and complete, not lacking anything. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, our nation, homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the Shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.